Trey Coates here, back again. Another episode, another beautiful day. Today is Tuesday, day after Labor Day, so I hope everyone had a good meal, fueled up, and is ready to learn about something interesting today, specifically with Flutter, as always, but more specifically with creating your own text translation app. Yes, your own text translation. And I'm gonna show you how to do that using the Translate Text Firebase extension, all right? So we're gonna use that extension and I'm gonna build a Flutter app to go along with it to show you how it will work, all right? So let's go ahead and jump into it. So first thing that we need to do is come over to the extensions tab. I'm in Firebase right now. I'm gonna to go to the text translation or translate text and hit install. All right, the first thing it says is review billing and usage. This is just letting me know that it's gonna charge me around one cent every month, but um, that jump change, so we cool with that. We'll hit next. Then we need to review APIs enabled and resources created. This is letting us know that this will be implementing the cloud translation API for our app, and it will give us this cloud function FS Translate. I assume the FS stands for uh, Firestore. Hit next on that. Review access granted to this extension. This is going to pretty much generate a new service account for us uh, because we need we need that profile or we need that permission to use this endpoint so we'll hit next then we need to configure the extension and we'll just run through this all right so the, the cloud functions location will keep it Iowa US Central one then the targeted language languages for translation right now we have English Spanish German and French I'm gonna take off English just because in the app today that we'll be building we'll already have the English translation by default so right now we just want these translations from the endpoint Spanish German and French all right, then the collections path, this is just the collection in our Firebase, uh, collect or Firebase Firestore collection that, um, that holds the actual translation document. So you can create multiple translations, but for this example, we'll just be creating one by auto ID and then building off that. The input field name is the, the, the property on that document that specifies what needs to be translated. Then finally, translations output field. This is going to be the map that brings all of the translations together. So we'll have the input and then the translate translated map will have uh, Spanish, German, and French inside the map. So now that that's configured properly, we'll hit install extension. And it says this should take about three to five minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and head over to Firestore because the next thing that we need to do now that we have the extension installed, that's all you had to do for the setup of the extension. So now that's building and we'll validate that it's working in a second. Um, but we need to create a translations table as it's said in the configuration. So we'll go to collection, uh, start collection, translations, hit next. Create an auto ID, so this is gonna be a new document for us. And we'll have a default input of my name is Trey. So we have our document, translations table, and the input field, okay? So I'm gonna give the extension a few minutes to download and then I'll be right back. All right, we now have our extension installed. We'll go ahead and refresh this. And now you can see that we have the translate text extension installed, all right? And if we go in here, we can actually see some details about what's gonna be returned up, returned to us, what it looks like, et cetera, et cetera, all right? To make sure that this actually went through and is everything is working properly, we, we can go to functions and make sure that we have that cloud function that was specified to us in the configuration. All right, so this external Firestore translate text, it uploaded, it uploaded successfully, so we're good. So now we can actually demonstrate what that looks like in the database when we need to create a translation, all right? So we have the input field. Um, we're gonna change that default input and put something new in. We'll say, where is my car? We hit update. All right, now you see this translated map just came back with the translations for that input. So in German is Wo is main auto. Spanish, donde esta mi coche? French, hoy es ma tour I'm probably mispronouncing the German and the French so please forgive me I think I got the Spanish right but German and French sound a little shaky but 
this is essentially what gets returned whenever we update the input all right so that's done in the database we have our endpoint we have our extension installed successfully now let's go ahead and make the app that's going to allow the user to update that input to whatever they want at any time and get back those translations okay we're going to come over to the demo over here let me first specify that for this project you you don't need cupertino icons but cloud firestore and firebase core you need those because we're going to be using firestore the package in order to uh, talk to our database in firestore all right so first thing that we need is we need a reference to that translation document right because we're going to be updating this document right here so we need a reference to this document so we'll create final document reference call it translation translations docra and that's going to be firebase firestore the collection is translations and then the document is going to be the id of this document right here we're only using this one for this example all right so we have our we have a reference to that document then we also need a text editing controller because we're going to need to um, allow the user to be able to send their input off update their input right we need a controller for that to understand what is the current text of that controller so final text controller uh final text editing controller i'm sorry and we'll just call it text controller cool that's all the global variables we need we can actually now come down here into our app and we're going to create a layout that is one list tile at the top that's going to just specify the english or whatever we input then three list tiles below that that's going to display the translations and then at the very bottom we're going to display a text field where the user uh, enters their input for what they want translated so in here in the safe area i'm going to replace the center and we're going to create a stream builder because we're going to be listening to changes on that document so whenever input is updated um, or whenever the translation update anything on that document updates we want to update the ui and render the new data so stream builder we'll type document snapshot and the stream is going to be the trans oops see it's going to be that translation doc ref uh, hey, let me get rid of that translation doc ref dot snapshots because we're listening to the snapshots on that document and then the build oops page here the builder is going to be of context and snapshot. It's going to be bringing back the context and the snapshot, but you don't need context. So what I'm going to do is underscore that context. I don't need it. I'm not going to use it. And then by the snapshot. All right. Now, first thing we need to do is if the snapshot is currently waiting for some data, then we just need to display a, an indicator, like a circular progress indicator, because we don't want to be looking for any data on the snapshot yet if it hasn't been provided any. So if snapshot dot connection state equals connection state dot waiting return spelling circular on circular. All right, cool. Now if it's not waiting, if it actually has some data now, we want to create a map of this document. We want to get this document into a map that we can actually use uh, for manipulating. So we'll call map, we'll create a variable called map or of type map, call it translation. And it's going to be the snapshot, the data on that snapshot, the data on that data object. And we need to add an exclamation point here because we need to, yeah, it's a nullable object, but we wanna actually assume that there is data there, all right? Now, the reason this is the red squiggly line right here is because we're trying to assign an object, a noble object to a map. Right now, snapshot.data.data is a noble object. So all we need to do is cast it to a map. So we'll say map stream stream dynamic. Now we have the data in that translation variable. So now what we can do is we can actually just build the UI. So we'll, we're gonna make a column. The children are going to be first a list tile. The title is going to be the translation. It's going to be the English translation of what we're trying to get translated. So it's not even really a translation, just the English text of whatever we specified. So since it's a map, we're going to look for that property on there labeled input because on the translation document, the input is the English value that we need, all right? 
So translation input, and then for the subtitle of this list tile, it's going to just say English. All right, let's see what that looks like real quick. If we just save that, hit refresh. All right, you see, we got where's my car in English, all right? Now, the rest of, what else we need to add is the other list tiles of showing the other translations, okay? So we're just gonna copy these down here three of them so one two three and instead of the input property on these I'm not sure why these didn't have the column instead of the input property for displaying the other translations we're actually going to be looking on the translated property and then their uh, abbreviation by the way I have this page called uh, well there's this language support page that gives you a bunch of abbreviations for different areas globally. So if you ever want to find or get a translation back that is in this country's translation, just come here to look for what that is. Okay, but back to the app. So for German, we have uh, the translator properly that we're looking for, translated, and we're looking for the E, that's the German one. We have Spanish. We're we'll looking for ES on Spanish, yep. And then we have French, we're we'll looking for FR. All right, let's save that. Cool, we got the German translation for where's my car, then the Spanish translation for where's my car, and the French translation for where's my car. Now, we have our list tiles. We're gonna create a spacer in between because now we're gonna just put the text field at the very bottom and create the text field. The controller is going to be that text controller that we created earlier. And then we need to add uh, a suffix button because the suffix is going to be the button that we select when we want to send the data. It's just going to be a button that comes at the end of the text field. All right, add the input decoration. Oops, decoration. Uh, suffix is the icon button and the icon is going to be icon of send. It's going to be the little send widget. Uh, you'll see that here in a second. Then we specify, specify the on pressed method, which is essentially going to be us updating that input value on that document. So we'll do that right now. So when they select send on that text field, then we're going to update the translation document. So we'll call translation.ref.update and we're updating that input value to whatever that text controller's value is. Cool. And after we update that document, we wanna go ahead and clear the clear the text field out because when we type again, we don't wanna have to backspace in order to put our new translation in, our new input. So we'll call text controller dot clear. All right, cool, we got our text field. I'm gonna wrap this in some padding because I hate seeing things that don't have padding around them. So we'll just put 16 padding around it. All right, perfect. Now let's go ahead and try this out. If I change this to um, what is my mother's name? Hit submit. All right, English updated to what is my mother's name? And you see our translations also updated. Spanish, in Spanish, what is my mother's name? Is Paul S. El Nombre de Mi Madre, all right? And as you can see here, it updated those values. So that endpoint, that extension, essentially is listening for any changes on that input field using the Translate Text API from Google and then automatically updating our document to whatever those translations are. Very easy, very simple, very cool. And it's quite amazing because honestly, when you think of like a translation app, you, like I said earlier, you think of like Google Translate, not being able to do it so simple and easy as it is in Flutter within like 10, 15 minutes. All right, I'm gonna try it one more time. Let's say, uh, where are you going for dinner? Hit submit, English is updated, and now our translation should be updated here. Wow, Spanish, donde vas a cenar? Where are you going for dinner, all right? So, simple as that. If you've been wondering how to do something like this, this is how you do it. Definitely check out the Translate Text Firebase extension. Check out all their extensions actually because they're all pretty helpful in, in one way or another. All right. As always, if this video was helpful, please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know how you feel about it. Let me know how you feel about Firebase extensions. And 
any feedback that you have on using any of them or maybe there's some out there that I haven't used yet myself and you have some idea about what benefit it can bring to an app, okay? So this is Trey Cole signing off. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Until next time, talk to you later. Peace.